Good morning, guys. Today we're going to look at solving linear systems uh, by linear combination. Linear combination is just what it sounds like. We're combining two lines together. Actually, has another name that more most of you are probably more familiar with, and that is elimination. Um, we will use these phrases or these terms, linear combination and elimination interchangeably. Uh, just important to get uh, familiar with both terms because both of them are equally correct. Um, linear combination is actually where I combine lines together to eliminate one variable. So that's where both of the lines or both of the names happen to come from. Uh, but let's go through and solve. We've talked before about solving systems by graphing, get a point, eyeball it, and then check to see if it's the right point. Uh, we looked at an algebraic technique called substitution. Uh, where if I have one variable that's nice and neat and easy to solve for, usually a coefficient of one, we'll roll with that and do substitution. Uh, if I've got something where all the variables are have coefficients and none of them are neat and easy to solve for, like I'm going to divide everything by four, I get fractions here. Divide everything by five, I get fractions. Divide all this stuff by two fractions, by three fractions. And substitution gets kind of hairy when you get a lot of fractions and all that stuff involved. So uh, linear combinations, a neater technique when I don't have an easy variable to isolate like we do in most substitution problems. So we're gonna go through and use our uh, linear combination steps. First thing we're gonna do is arrange the equations with like terms in columns. Get all my x's lined up, all my y's lined up, and my constants all move to the other side of the equal sign, or whatever my variables happen to be. Like terms all lined up. Uh, then we're gonna multiply one or, not like iron or, either or, Multiply one or both equations by factors necessary to get one variable type to have opposite coefficients. So we're going to pick something. Say I want to. I've decided I want to get rid of my x's. I can't get rid of x's until they have the opposite coefficients: positive three x and negative three x, positive six y, negative six y, positive twelve x, negative twelve x, positive fourteen b, negative fourteen b. Same variable, opposite coefficients. And the way we do that is by multiplying one or both equations by some number. And they, they'll be different numbers um, that will give us the same thing. So we're finding, usually we're finding a least common multiple uh, for that variable that we've decided um, to get rid of, to eliminate. Well, once we've got the opposite coefficients, we're going to add those two new equations together. Those opposite coefficients, since they're opposite numbers, should eliminate, should cancel out. And we're going to solve for the remaining value, solve for your other variables. Uh, once I've got that, I've got a number for that variable, so I just plug that back into one of my original equations, and either of the original equations, and solve. So a lot, uh, very, very wordy, seems really complex, it's really not that bad, and we'll take you through a few examples to see that. So first thing, I've got to get all my x, y's, and z's lined up. Uh, so let's do that. I just prefer the x, y constant, or x, y's, and z's. X's, y's, and constants um, lined up. So standard form is usually how I go. So I'll put my x term first. 5x plus 4y equals 6. I'll dump that for a minute since we know it's a system already. Negative 2x minus 3y equals negative 1. Now, sometimes in this step, you may have to move something from one side of the equal sign to the other because I need all my variables on one side. I'm sorry, all my like variables on the same side. So here I have all my x's on the left of the equal, all my y's on the right of the equal, and my constants are on the right. It doesn't make a difference if all my y's were over here with my constants as long as I have the same variables on the same side. From there, after we've arranged them in columns, multiply one or both equations by factors, blah, 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 blah. Pick a variable to get rid of. So start with that. If I want to get rid of my x's or to get rid of my y's. It doesn't make a difference which one you pick. You're going to get the same solution in the end. So you just pick. Uh, if you think 5 and 2 is very easy to get a least common multiple for, then go with it. If you think 4 and 3 is easiest to get the opposite coefficient, the least common multiple, then you go with it. I'm just going to pick the x because it's first. Because I don't think there's a big difference between making those 10s or making those 12 since those are the least common multiples. So I'm just going to pick a number, any number, not any number, the number that will make them uh, work together, which will give me the same number opposite coefficients. 
So since I've already said two and five have a least common multiple of 10, ask yourself, five times what equals 10? Five times two. So my first equation is going to get a two because two times five X will equal 10 X. My second equation doesn't need to equal 10 X. I don't need this equaling 10 X on the bottom. I need it to equal negative 10 X. They've got to be opposite so that they can cancel. So I'm going to take this negative two and multiply it by what number to give me a negative 10? That number is the five. Pretty straightforward. Two times five X will give me 10 X. Five times negative two X will give me negative 10 X. We're ready to go. We'll be able to eliminate. We just have to finish multiplying out. So it's a distributive property at this point. Two times four Y gives me eight Y. Two times six gives me 12. Next, five times negative three Y is negative 15 Y. Five times negative one is negative five. Common mistake is people will distribute to the X and Y's and they'll forget to distribute to the other side of the equal sign. Make sure we're distributing to every single term in there. See, we already did it to the first one, but I'll draw it just to remind you. So every term. So now we've taken care of step two. Multiply by something to pick one, get one variable with opposite coefficient. From there, we go to step three. Add them together. And it's as easy as it sounds. We're just adding these two equations together. So 10x and negative 10x is 0x. Has to always do that cancel step. Okay, so I'm going to get 0x. A lot of people get in the habit of saying, oh, the x's are going to cancel or cross them out. And they won't check to make sure. Because I could have 10x and 10x, that would be equal to 20x. Which means I didn't get a negative where I'm supposed to, so everything else is going to be off. So always do that, even though you know they're supposed to cancel, don't assume they're going to cancel. That's a double check, make sure you have all your signs correct. So 10x plus negative 10x is 0x. So my x is eliminated like I needed them to. Combine my y's. 8y minus 15y is negative 7y. And then combine my constant. 12 minus 5 is also negative 7. From there, we have a simple equation. Negative 7y equals negative 7. Isolate the variable. How do you get y by itself? Divide by the negative 7. So y equals 1. Now it's just a substitution problem. We know one variable, so we go back to either of the originals and plug that one variable in. You pick whatever you want. Does, it really doesn't make a difference. Second equation's got smaller numbers. So we'll go with negative 2x minus 3 times 1 equals negative 1. Negative 2x minus 3 times 1 equals negative 1. So I just put the 1, took the second equation, and put the 1 where the y was. Do the arithmetic. Negative 2x minus 3 equals negative 1. Isolate my variable, so move my 3. Negative 2x equals 2. Move my coefficient, negative 2. So we get x equals negative 1, y equals positive 1. <coughs> I feel like I have an error somewhere. But let's check, let's check, let's check, let's check. All right, so, oh, found it. <laughs> Missed this. 12 minus 5 is positive 7. So positive 7 divided by negative 7 is negative 1. So that should have been a negative 1 we plugged in. I knew there was something off. Plug a negative 1 in, and I've got negative 2x plus 3 equals negative 1. Now I will add, uh, subtract my 3 over. So negative 2x equals negative 4. Divide by negative 2. So we get x equals 2. Solution is the point 2, negative 1. And just like with substitutions and with graphing, I can always check to make sure I've got the right point by just doing a quick evaluate. Uh, 4 times y. 
y is negative 1 plus 5 times 2 does that equal 6 negative 4 plus 10 equals 6 that checks negative 2 times x which was 2 minus 3 times y which was negative 1 does that equal negative 1 so negative 4 plus 3 equals negative 1 that checks so that is our solution point that's solving by linear combination identify a variable to get rid of multiply and if all those fails, you're not sure what gets you at least on multiplying. You just multiply them by each other, and you're going to have the same number every time. Just make sure one of them gives you a positive, one gives you a negative. But multiply by necessary factors to get an opposite coefficient. Then distribute those same factors to everything else. Add your lines. Solve for the remaining variable. Plug it back into the original. You have the answer. Be careful. Don't lose a negative sign because it will throw everything else off. A lot of calculations, a lot of arithmetic going on in here. So one small error towards the beginning throws everything else off. That's why it's really important to always go back and check and make sure you didn't have any of those small errors. Precision uh, and accuracy is very important. Um, let's put up another example and uh, I'll let y'all try that one on your own. Okay, right now, guys, I take a minute, pause the video, and I want you to try to work through this one right here, solve it by linear combination. Okay, so let's go through uh, first step. Let's get our variables arranged, or get the yeah variables arranged in columns. So um, we'll get crazy this time. Y'all ready? We're going to start with the y's. 11y plus 3x equals 4. There you go. I did y's first. All that matters is I do y's first on the second equation. Negative 6y minus 2x equals 0. Y's, X's equals constants. So first step is taking care. Step two is let's get um, opposite coefficients. So pick any variable that you want in this problem to get rid of. I think, again, X's are probably your best case because getting 3 and 2 to be the same number is a lot easier than getting 6 and 11. But you know what? I'm going to do 6 and 11 just to show you six, show that you can do it that way because I'm going to bet most of y'all probably just did that with the x's. So I'm going to show you the other side of it with 6 and 11. So keep in mind what you're working toward. What number will 6 and 11 both go into? If you don't know off the top of your head that it's 66, that that's the least common multiple of 6 and 11, just multiply 6 times 11. Put a 6 right here. Put an 11 right there and see if, what you get. 6 times 11, 66y. 11 times negative 6, negative 66y. Do we have opposite coefficients? Positive 66y, negative 66y. The answer is yes. Now, at this point, if I didn't have a negative where I need one, because we need them to be opposites, I just tag negative on one of those, and then we would have our opposite coefficients. Or say that if both came out negative, I needed one positive, just tag a negative on there and you'll have your opposite coefficients. All right, let's finish distributing then since we have our necessary factors taken care of. 6 times 3x is 18x. 6 times 4 is 24. Remember, distributing all the way across the equal sign. Uh, we did 11 times negative 6 was negative 66. 11 and negative 2 is negative 22x. And 11 and 0 is 0. Step 2 is taken care of. We have all necessary factors identified and distributed. Step 3, combine your lines. Do the linear combination step. 66y minus 66y gives me my 0y. They cancel as they should. 18x minus 22x, negative 4x. 24 equals 0 equals 24. Hopefully I have my signs correct on this one. Uh, so we go through and solve negative 4x equals 24 divided by the negative 4. So x equals negative 6. x equals negative 6. Now, step 3, 
after our star step four, we added, solve for the remaining variable. Step four, substitute that back in to either of the originals. Of your two originals, which one do you want to deal with? Second one's got smaller numbers. They're negative, but at least they're smaller. So let's go negative 6y minus 2x equals 0. So I'm just going to move this one on down here. And x is negative 6. So negative 6y minus 2 times negative 6 equals 0. And do the arithmetic. Negative 2 plus, or sorry, negative 2 minus 6 is plus 12. Move my 12. Negative 6y equals 12. Move my negative 6. So y equals negative 2. y is negative 2. So that is a solution to my system. We usually write it as an ordered pair. And once again, I lost a negative sign. I'm telling you, I'm not on today. 0 minus 12 is negative 12. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 is positive 2. So negative 6 and positive 2 uh, is our solution. So that's our order pair. Uh, we can go through and check. Always go through and check. 3 times x, which is negative 6, plus 11 times 2. Does that equal 4? Negative 18 plus 22 equals 4, so that's a check. Negative 6 times my y-coordinate, which is 2, minus 2 times negative 6. Does that equal 0? Negative 12, positive 12 is 0, so that's a check. So that is our um, solution set. Uh, two special cases that I want to look at using linear combination. So uh, put those right up, and we'll check them out. Okay, I already have two, or I have two special cases up here. Um, of systems, and I want to look at them using linear combination. If you want, pause it for a second. Uh, try to work each of them on your own. See what you come up with as far as what is special about them, and maybe what type of solutions that they do have as opposed to a traditional uh, x equals y equals one point solution. Um, if you don't want to pause it, we'll go over it right now. So let's quickly solve these. I already have my variables lined up. Pick a variable to get rid of, doesn't matter. Uh, let's get rid of x's in this first one. So, if I'm getting rid of x's, let's pick a coefficient, not pick a coefficient. Decide what number they need to be, so I'm going to multiply this one by 3, this one by 2. Just multiply them by each other. So 2 times this is 6x, two time, 3 times 2x is 6x. So I have the same coefficient, I need opposite coefficients. So I've got to tag a negative on there somewhere. So it doesn't matter where, let's just put it on the bottom. We're usually more comfortable with that. So I have my negative 6x, let's finish distributing to do the math. 2 and 3y is 6y. 2 and 9 is 18. From bottom, negative 6y and positive 12. Next step is add them up. 6x minus 6x is 0x. 6y minus 6y is 0y. 18 plus 12 is 30. So we got 0 equals 30. So just like when we solved by substitution, variables dropped out and we got a false statement. We know that it should be, oh, I'm going the wrong way, no solutions. Because there's no combination of x's and y's that will ever make 0 equal 30. So no solutions to this set. Again, we can see it. 3 and 2, 3 and 2, 9 and negative 4. This one we what, divided by 3 and multiplied by 2. Divide by 3 and multiply by 2. Here, if we had divided by 3 and multiplied by 2, we wouldn't have gotten negative 4. We actually divided by 9 and multiplied by negative 4 to get that one. So it's not the 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 2 thirds. It's two thirds, two thirds, and negative four ninths. So we can see that those are not multiples of each other. Same slope, um, but the y coordinates, or sorry, the y intercept, the constant, are not going to be the same. So no solutions in this case. Let's look at this one over here. I'm sure you can guess where it's going, but let's try it out. Uh, again, 
Let's get rid of the y's this time. So 3 and 2, so multiply the top by 2, bottom by 3. So I get uh, 2 and 3 at 6y. 3 and 2 is 6y. Need a negative on there somewhere, so let's put it on the top one this time. We'll change it up. Now we have our opposite coefficients, so negative 6x minus the 6y equals negative 18. Positive 6x plus the 6y equals 18. Combine our lines. Negative 6x positive 6x is 0x. They cancel. Negative 6y plus 6y is 0y. They cancel. Negative 18 plus 18 is 0. They cancel. So we get 0 equals 0. All variables drop out. We get a true statement. As we remember from before, that means every x, or there are infinitely many x's and y's because that's always true. So infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. Divide by 3, multiplied by 2, turn that into 2. Divided by 3, multiplied by 2, turn that into 2. And divided this one by 3, got 3, multiplied by 2, made it a 6. So since all three pieces have the same scalar, had to multiply by the same value, then that tells us that the slope and the y-intercept are equivalent. That means we have two of the identical lines, infinitely many solutions. All right, so that's it for solving linear equations. We've looked at them by graphing. We've looked at them by solving with substitution. We've looked at it uh, solving for with linear combination. Uh, we've got a few more techniques when we start working with matrices, um, but that's it for algebraically right now, solving systems of linear equations. Uh, graphing is great if you want an eyeball of where it is or an estimate of where it is, um, but if you need an exact answer, substitution, linear combination, you need to go with one of those two techniques. Whichever one you use, doesn't matter, they'll both put you at the same solution. Uh, that's it for systems of linear equations as far as solving goes right now, and I will see you in class tomorrow, guys.